Hi everyone, I'm Louis. I work as a junior composer for Spitfire and over the past couple of months I've been composing with Labs. In these videos I'd love to showcase some of the pieces I've written using the Labs libraries. If you've got any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave it in the comments and I'd love to incorporate it in future videos. Today we're going to take a look at the Labs synth and a little bit of music I composed for the trailer, so let's take a listen. <laughs> So for this piece, I only used the Lab Synth library and a little bit of glass and steel for the percussion. Started off with Synthpad 5, I thought it was a pretty cool sound to start off a melody with. So I began by playing a little motif, sort of oscillating pattern based around a B minor chord, and that drives through the whole of the piece. I was actually inspired by the new Muse album, especially the last song, I think it's called The Void. And uh, they do a similar thing, they start off the song with a very small little sequence that runs throughout the whole of the piece. So I kind of took a little bit of inspiration from that. So that runs throughout the whole piece and it's also doubled up by another pad five, which just is the same thing, but an octave above. With this one, I made sure to turn down the attack and the release fairly low. So the sound could really cut through in the piece because later on we've got some more ambient and sustained synths coming in. So I really wanted this to be heard without it being sort of smothered. So here's how it sounds with the parameters I've set. So yeah, a really nice sound and it sort of cuts off as soon as I stop playing which is what I wanted. Whereas if I turned the release up, it would be a lot more sort of echoey and almost ghostly sounding. So it goes something like this. And that's the great thing about this library. You can really customize the synths to get the exact sound you want just using the UI and it's it's really simple to use. Just after the intro, we've got the glass and steel coming in and also a nice bit of pad number three, which I've got as the base. Here I did a similar thing. I've turned both the attack and release fairly low, but you'll notice the bass fades in when it starts and that's because I've got it set to the dynamic fader. So here's how that sounds. chose pad 3 for the bass because you can get some really really nice rumbly synth sounds when you play the low end. Just after that we've got another synth pad 5 playing the exact same thing, the exact same sequence right from the beginning, just an octave higher to help double that up. Alongside that we've got pads 1 and 2 working together to help create some chords. You've got synth pad 1 playing the lower end of the chords whereas pad 2 is playing the higher end. Pad 1's a bit more of a, a subtler sound and I didn't really want it to get in the way of, of pad three which was the bass because otherwise it would sound a bit too muddy and we've got pad number two here playing the higher notes in the chord especially when you control it with the the fader and the mod wheel you can really let the the sound sing here's how they both sound together playing the chords
Notice around bar 17 when the climax starts to begin, the modulation's ramped all the way to the top and that helps create some really lovely emotive synth sounds. Synthpad 4 is one of my favourites in the library. I'm using it here as a harmonic line to help create a little bit of interest in the piece. I actually use this as the main melody for my demo. With this pad I've done a similar thing like I've done with the other pads. I've turned the attack fairly low. However, I've turned the release and other parameters, such as the sustain, fairly high to, to create a really sort of echoey, ghostly sound, which is what I wanted for the harmony. So it sounds something like this. It's great, you still get a sound that cuts through because the attack's so low, but it lingers a bit because the release and the sustains turned up. And that creates a really nice contrast alongside the main motif. So here they both sound together. So you still get a really nice prominent sound. Now this is the fun bit, we're getting to the climax of the piece and we've got synth pads number 7 and 8 joining to help sort of beef out the harmony and, and the piece in general. So synth pad 7 is quite a different sound compared to the other synths, it's a lot more of a, a grittier kind of synth sound. As good as it sounds in the bass, I used it quite sparingly here as I didn't want it to overwhelm the other synths. So I've just got it playing four notes and it really, really complements the other synth pads well and helps build up a really nice texture to the piece. Synth pad number eight is also really, really different compared to the other ones. Uh, you've got really, really nice, fat, harmonically rich sound coming out of it, even when you're just playing one or two notes together. It's a lot of fun with both pads 7 and 8 to experiment with the sound using the faders and, and messing around with the automation and all of that. You can create some really, really nice, cool, interesting stuff. Towards the end of the piece, we've also got another synth pad 2, and that's just to help beef out the bass. Like I said before, I've used it in the chords up here, and it really sings out, so I wanted it to help highlight the bass. And here's how that sounds.
Both these pads sound really great coupled together in the bass. One of my colleagues actually told me it sounds a little bit like Tron, but I've never seen it, so I guess it's just a bit of a happy accident. And that's it. All the other pads just fade out while SynthPad 5 takes it to the end with the little motif it was playing from the beginning. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have fun playing with these pads as much as I did. Be sure to check out the mixed trailer and demo as well as any other tracks I've mentioned as inspiration in the description below. See you in the next one.